It's time for EdTech Mondays, brought to you by Mastercard Foundation and CC Hub. Welcome to another amazing episode of the EdTech Mondays Nigeria Show, a platform that facilitates critical conversations on the use of technology for teaching and learning in Nigeria. My name is Chinyelu Akba, your host on the show. It's good to be back here again. This week, we'll be continuing our conversation on a crucial and interesting topic, evaluating the impact of AI, artificial intelligence, in education. Last week, we engaged Dr. Olumide Okubadejo, who shared valuable insights on the potential impact of artificial intelligence in scaling edtech businesses. Today, I'm excited to introduce our next guest, Sadiq Enusoji, a tech entrepreneur with over 10 years of experience using technology for social impact across various industries. He's the co-founder and CTO at SimbiBot, an edtech startup leveraging artificial intelligence to improve learning outcomes for students in primary and secondary schools. Join me today as we welcome Sadiq Elusoji. Hi, Chielu. Very excited to be here today. With you. Great. Thank you. So let's jump right into it. All right. Why artificial intelligence? How did you get into the mix? Continue, this is something that just started at least for us here in Nigeria. This is about a year, two years old. Yeah. If you talk about the boom and public acceptance with the chat GPT-4 and all of that, how did you find your way into it before it became an in thing? Okay, so um, for us, it was an exciting thing back then, around 2018-19 with Sembebot. So we wanted to do something different. We wanted to do something that we feel could uh, touch lives and be impactful back then. So we started with Okay, let's make this very engaging and conversational. And that was where SembiBot started from, actually. So that was where the bot came from. So chat with Sembi and you can learn. So that was how it started for us. So it was just um, in a bit to do something different and make learning more personal. What's Mike? You know, I joked about SembiBot being the OGs <laughs> of artificial intelligence. So back then, was there any worry or concern about acceptance? Did you feel people were right on the waves of it's been something new and conversational or it was just ahead of its time? It, it might affect acceptance. Yes, it was a bit ahead of its time because um, even in our journey, when it was just purely chatbots, it was limiting in a way. So we then made it into a full-fledged platform where it could be a mobile app and even a web application where you could do more things beyond just being a chatbot. Still... Um, using the power of the AI back then. So, so uh, sorry, our listeners, we've gone too deep into Simi bots and I was assuming everybody knew or knows what Simi was. So just give us a brief run through of Simi bots. Okay, so Simi bots is an educational application for K-12 students. And then um, we say it uses the Meistic learning style. So now just explaining what Meistic is. It's basically um, teaching you through questioning you. So the way SemiBot helps you learn is it basically tries to understand you first by asking you questions. So take, for instance, you're trying to learn something in biology, a particular topic in biology. So it basically asks you questions the first time. So a number of questions to then understand how you learn and then gauge your level of understanding of the topic. Then it then designs contents for you based on responses to your questions. Very interesting. It was ahead of its <laughs> <laughs> And this was what year? This was 2018-19. Very well ahead. Is this pre-COVID? Yes, sir. Pre, 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 pre COVID. This was well ahead. And how was the adoption and people's openness to using it at the time? Okay, yes. The adoption was interesting, I would say. Um when we launched, we had like um a thousand users on on, on the first month or so. And um over the last five or so years that it's been up. We have over 200,000 students that are learning with it today. So adoption has been impressive, I would say. Okay, so this just feeds easily into my next question because I'm asking you to evaluate the perception of edtech stakeholders, including the government, 
um, to the use of AI for teaching and learning. So um, when we, we've been speaking a lot about how AI would help personalize learning, which is what you've explained as what Simi Board does, because it's the next question is based on your response, right? So what's the acceptance? Do you think we're at a good place right now? Are people more receptive to a Simi Bot now than they were years back in 2018, 2019? Are learners also more open? Do you understand what it's about and interacting better? Are parents, you know, giving children access to learning products that leverage artificial intelligence to just help their learning be better? What's the what's acceptance like? Yes, acceptance has increased, but of course it could always be better. Um, and um, we could take it even institutional. That is with support from governments, NGOs to make um, AI and um, devices that it can run on more available and accessible to students in general. So during during the course of running SEMBI, then um, we tried to even get governments involved such that devices can be made available to students so that not only the, the kids of the rich could access uh, this tool. So that went on for quite a while. Well, I would say acceptance has gotten better, but of course, they could always do more. So I, I can hear you struggling not to speak about the bottlenecks that you face. So let's talk about these bottlenecks. What are the concerns people have when it comes to opening themselves up to AI for education? Um, it's it's a dicey place where people tell you, you will not know anything again when you start using AI. Oh, it's the way you're learning. Oh, you'll be able to ask questions. You know, there's so many misconceptions and fears that exist. So what are some of those concerns and what are some of the things that can be done to, you know, assuage all the fears people have? Okay. So one of the concerns was actually with school administrators and um, teachers. So uh, some were seeing it as a replacement for teachers. Mm. But then we are saying no, it is even to augment what is being taught in school. Mm -hmm. So it is an augmentation for learning rather than a replacement for teachers. So even your teachers, they could learn with this, they could um, use it in upskilling. So we are not taking away your teachers and teachers are not taking you away. So one of our goals then was to even touch as many lives of teachers as yes. possible then. So um yeah we're educating people on it okay it could do this for you it could be your learning companion and um, after school you could use this and even teachers in school could use this to teach their students so that they can um, learn better and uh, make learning more personal to those students and for the government are there any concerns you spoke about you know tools and devices um let's speak about connectivity is there or are there any limitations when you know co connectivity comes to play and possible um, effects on adoption of AI um, tools that leverage artificial intelligence, edtech tools that leverage artificial intelligence? Yes. Okay. So yes, connectivity is a big concern. And, um, and sorry, sorry. And this is even not just for the users, even for people who are people like you who are developing the solutions. Where does connectivity and you know this is on the government? So just think about it from the standpoint of just users. Think about it from both users and you, the developers as well. Yes, um, connectivity was a huge concern. Of course, it would have been easier if this could just be available and accessible on the internet to everyone. But because um, before connectivity even got this easier in 2024, back then in 2018, it was still a bit uh, shaky. So we even went the length of then making this accessible offline such that you just have a one-time download and then mm. all of the power using one device on, on your device and mm. then becomes accessible. So we made it into desktop apps that could be installed in schools. Mm. So some school administrators were able to use these. We got a bit of government support too, actually. So, so and, that, and that's when the innovation comes in, you know, when founders and businesses are able to innovate around situation where you speak about the offline models it just takes away connectivity takes away yes. power mm. and access is taken care of so as we anticipate the increased use of artificial intelligence in education is there perhaps a body or an organization in nigeria that is rec regulating the ethical integration of ai for learning 
Okay, so I would say the body in charge of that would still be the um, the uh, ministry for I think information, uh, communication, information, yes, yes. and um, so yeah, related to NDPR again. AI is still just uh, a program; it's still software. So when um, regulations are formed around data privacy, data protection, so it still covers. So yeah, I would say that body is still. And are you getting, I'm seeing you um, just speaking more broadly and, you know, also personalizing to people who already have solutions that live in AI. Are you recognized by the government? Are you getting the support that you would require, you know, from this ministry, ministries? Okay, so personally for us at this moment, not so much, but of course, efforts are always going into making things. I mean, there are a lot of solutions available now, so... Okay, and finally, in your opinion, where are we headed in Nigeria with the use of artificial intelligence in education? What should we expect? What should we anticipate? We've overflocked LLMs. I think LLMs have, they've seen a lot yes. in Nigeria. So what else do we look forward to beyond la large language models? Like, Okay, so I would say we have still not even explored LLMs to the fullest. The right, so we're just doing the yes, basic. Yeah, we're still on the wow. So I can give you an example of an Please interesting do. thing that could be possible, which we even trying to explore back then. So, uh, you know, when you're writing exams, we have, um, let's say, two major kinds of exams. Uh, we have the multi-choice questions and um, the, the, let me say, the written ones or the theory. Mm -hmm. So multi-choice is very easy to score. You can use um, OCR or MR to to um, grade those scores. But then when it comes to grading theory questions, they could be very difficult because they actually need humans, teachers to go through mm -hmm. what you've written. So with LLMs, you could actually grade written, you, you could grade essays, for instance. So essays written by students, so you could grade it. That is one of the ways that you can make life easier for oh, teachers. Cool. I. Yes, okay. <laughs> so all those times that we were in school, right? Think come on and have a say right clearly because yes. a computer will read it. <laughs> a computer will read it. And we'll be using a computer that is scoring. You remember, I don't know. But we'll tell you, write clearly, use 2B or H B friend to because it's a computer. It wasn't a computer that was reading it. Hold <laughs> <there. laughs> on, you. For multi-choice, computers could actually grade it. Okay. The ones where you shade. shade. Yes. Uh, but the ones where you were writing, write it. yeah, the teachers had to grade it. But then it tells us your handwriting has to be clever. Yeah, it has to be. That will write, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just to... So we had not even gotten there, then. No, we had And we haven't gotten there now. But then we're but heading towards yes, it. Yes, we're heading towards it, yeah. Great, so you're charging your compatriots yes. in edtech to do more, you know. It's, we're just, we're barely scratching the surface of what's yes. available. Yes. Thank you so much, Sadiq. It's been an interesting time listening to you and hearing how you built, you know, a solution way before its time and was able to scale. Well done on the work you and the team are doing at SimbiBot. And to you, our listeners, would love to hear from you. What ways do you think artificial intelligence can impact education in nigeria what type of solutions would you want to see we've had you know sadiq give us some ideas imagine if you had artificial intelligence being able to grade you know theory questions and answers in an exam that would make life easier for you know teachers and in fact help you to get your results faster so what do you think about that what other solutions do you think we should start thinking of building that would leverage artificial intelligence. would love to hear from you. Send us your thoughts, comments, and feedback to 0703-165-0809. You can send your feedback as an SMS or a WhatsApp message. We also have a very active community on WhatsApp and Telegram. So you can join the WhatsApp and Telegram community at EdTech Mondays Nigeria, where so much conversation happens after we have aired. And you can go in there, immerse yourself in the conversations, and who knows, you might be well on your way to building the next big EdTech solution in Nigeria. And in case you missed this week's episode, or you know anyone who missed this week's episode and our previous episodes, 
do not worry, you have you covered. Go on to Spotify, EdTech Mondays Nigeria, or CC Hub Africa on YouTube to watch and listen again. Till I come your way next week, I remain your host, Chinyanu Apa. Remember to continue testing the limitless world of education technology in Nigeria. It's bye for now. EdTech Monday is proudly brought to you by MasterCard Foundation and CC Hub.